Welcome everybody to Parent with Purpose. And again, we are in a topic that might be controversial for some. Um, but if you know the show at all, you know that we actually like to get into the heart of things that really matter to us as parents. And we are trying to educate you and show you um, some of the things that you have choices on. Uh, in our society, sometimes we actually come up against something and we think that, you know, it has to be done this way. And part of the reason for the show is to show you pros and cons to different things so you have the option to make solid decisions for yourself as a parent. Really. So today we're actually going to be talking about circumcision. And for those that are not circumcised, it, the word they actually use is called intact, which when I learned that I thought was um, the perfect wording for that. But today we want to welcome Holly. Thank you, Holly, for being here and, and sparing some time for us because I know you've been very busy. And I want to ask, start off by asking you, what organization is it that you work for that gives you the resources that we're going to be talking about today? I'm the director for Intact Houston and Intact Texas, um, which is uh, with the local grassroots chapter of the Intact Network, which is associated mm -hmm. with Saving Our Sons. So um, if you go to savingsons.org, you'll get all the information there um, that we like to give out to people. Okay, so let's talk about some of the information. Um, but first of all, let's find out a little bit about you. Do you have any children and how many are boys? I have two boys. You have okay. decided to become part of this organization because this is very dear to you because you did not want to get your boys circumcised. And what was the main reason for that? Well, um, when I was first pregnant, I, I started looking into it when I found out that uh, I was having a boy. It was something that just kept coming up on the internet, and uh, I just thought, okay, this is something that is very important, obviously, and it really didn't take much research to realize that it was not necessary, and I really didn't want to do anything um, to my boys or for my boys that was not going to be necessary, and if I um, chose to do it, it couldn't be taken back. So there's a lot of um, misconceptions or myths about circumcisions, about the reason why we should or shouldn't. So one of the biggest myths that I understand that was very prevalent in the day was that if you didn't get your child circumcised, that they had a higher risk of getting HIV. Is that correct? Yes, and that's actually still um, a pretty prevalent myth, but the studies are very flawed. Um, they were done in Africa on uh, males, and certain groups were told to wear condoms, and certain ones were not. And um, if you really, instead of looking at uh, the uh, headlines of it, really look at the data for what it is. Compare these studies with like like actual like effective data, and you'll see that this is not um, usable at all. It's it doesn't make sense that um, our nation that has a, an extremely high HIV rate also has an extremely high circumcision rate. So, you know, it really cannot be considered causation there when you, when you think about it. So in Europe, they have a very low circumcision rate and a very low HIV rate. Oh, okay. So typically Europeans are not circumcised. Is that anything to do with religion or is that just cultural? I think that it's just cultural. Um, there's a lot of um, Catholic uh, those are the Catholic faith in Europe, and they don't traditionally circumcise. So it's it's a very culturally based uh, tradition for them. Okay, so let's actually get down to the nitty gritty of this. I mean, besides the myths of you know the the child is going to end up with infection and so on and so forth, how is it any different for girls or boys as far as keeping things cleaned if they're intact or not? Well, intact? it's actually the same for girls and boys. Um, when they're babies, you would just wipe the outside. It's you wipe it, dab it, air dry it. There's nothing to be done. You don't go inside any folds. You don't push anything back. You don't, there, there's no extra steps for, for cleaning. A circumcised baby, um, there are actually quite a few more steps after the circumcision because this is an open wound. So mm -hmm. you need to um, protect the wound from chafing and sticking to the diaper. Um, apply mm -hmm. Vaseline for six months on the outside to keep it um, you know, supple enough so it's not starting to painfully um, dry out and to protect it from um, meatal stenosis, which is a narrowing of the, um, the urinary opening, and that can mm -hmm. be extremely dangerous. So um, this is something that they recommend. You know, and just the, the, the pain that comes during the recovery process and everything. So there's, there's a lot of um, extra considerations to be made. 
um, after you have cut off part of that organ um, in a newborn. What is your number one reason that you don't feel circumcision should happen to boys? Well, it's just something that I feel is very personal um, to make body modifications and body alterations, which, um, you know, I'm not anti-circumcision. I always say that um, I'm pro-intact, uh, pro pro-genital autonomy. I like to spread awareness of the benefits of, um, you know, the intact genitalia. Um, but if you, you personally do not care for that, um, then you are free to modify your own body, um, you know, when you're of an age to consent and understand. That's, and that's an like important that. distinction to make, that it's not an anti-circumcision um, attitude. But this is something that we're forcing on minors who cannot protest, who cannot consent, and who do not understand what is okay. happening. And with no scientific reason, health-wise, for doing so. Right. It's, it's not the same as, um, you know, perhaps other medical procedures that are um, necessary, you know, because there are a lot of traumatic procedures that, um, you know, children may undergo a brain surgery or something like that. But this is a cosmetic surgery. And I don't mean cosmetic in that um, it's like trimming your fingernails. It's not going to um, cause any consequence, um, any lasting consequence, um, because it, it certainly will. Um, I mean, cosmetic in the way that this is for aesthetic purposes. A lot of parents choose this for their child because the father is and they want the son to match. This isn't actually why circumcision caught on in the U.S. Um, back in, you know, the Victorian days, you know, we had this whole um, purity, this issue with, with you know, sexual purity and everything Harvey like Kellogg that. Of, um, Kellogg of cornflakes. He outed circumcision for children to be, um, to curb masturbation. So it was to kind of cure, um, you know, sexual urges in uh, children who should continue. So that's why, that's why circumcision in America began. Wow, I did not know that. Okay, there's an interesting tidbit. Is that on the website? Yes, yes, we have a lot okay. of information on that as well. Yes, um, I think so. And I, I think that a lot of people think that um, circumcision began, that Christians um, traditionally circumcise and that that has been uh, you know, why this has continued. I mean, there are certainly some people who think it's because of medical reasons that we needed it to be cleaner. Um, and then I think the other sex of people, they think that it's because of, you know, the, the Christians, this is something Christians have always done. Um, but if you look at the information from Christianity in the New Testament, there are so many references to circumcision, but they're not um, in support of it at all. In instances. Um, during the history, the Christian history, where um, they they would even stone women for not protecting their um, children from genital cutting. So mm -hmm. it's, it wasn't ever looked upon as um, something that was needed. So, uh, just briefly speaking about religion, does your website give any parents who uh, come from a religious belief any kind of support where they can go in and, and find out information about their own religion? Or, or like, and if so, which religions does it talk about? We have um, Intact Jewish Network, um, Intact uh, Muslim Network, and we have um, the Christian Christian resources as well um, that I mentioned. And, and it's really good to um, direct people to, toward those resources because it's really nice to have peers and those who um, also share your faith or sharing sharing their thoughts, their experiences, yes. and um, where they're coming from and why they chose to keep their children intact. Realizing that they're a person of their own and, um, you know, they'll be loved no matter what. And, you know, that all of these religions, you know, teach that, you know, we, we love each other and accept each other um, for who we are. And the resources for those um, faith-based are also on the website and we can leave those down below for people just to click on. Yes. So is there any resource you have on your website that actually gives like a, a very good detail of why somebody shouldn't? Do you have any kind of um, a list or anything like that? We have a list called the lost list that um, I like to refer people to a lot. It details um, the different functions that are lost to circumcision. 
um, functions that the foreskin um, provides throughout life and that are permanently lost. Um, For both children and adults? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, uh, I like to refer men to this list so they can kind of have a, um, a better perception of the full scope of this loss um, instead of kind of seeing, seeing the circumcision as just a snip or, um, mm -hmm. you know, it was not a big deal. You know, maybe they didn't remember it. And so they don't have any type of um, comparison of like what, what could have been. What could have been, yeah. That's, that's very well said, what could have been, yeah. Okay. So now the one last question that I have for you regarding this is how do parents kind of deal with in-laws and other people criticizing them if they decide to keep their child intact and yet they don't believe that that's really what should happen? What advice do you have for a parent on that? I think that as a parent, your um, job first and foremost is to protect your child. So um, whatever, whatever you need to do to protect your child, you're doing the right thing. Don't think that it's something that you need to worry about. Like a lot of parents worry so much about what others think. Focus on your baby and once you have your baby and they hold that baby, they will mm -hmm. fall in love with him and they realize he's perfect. He doesn't need to change. He's healthy. He's happy. There's nothing that we need to do to alter him, and we don't want to hurt him. And um, I think it takes takes people uh, a lot longer, maybe than others, to kind of come to a level of acceptance, um, and maybe to do all the research they need to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that if you're just patient. You realize it. They'll just come around. You know, just trust. Mm -hmm. But I like what you said. You know what your job as a parent is to protect your child. So um, today our whole goal was we are trying to give you the pros and cons of this so that you could actually make a very solid decision for yourself whether or not circumcision was something you wanted for your, for your boys or not. And we're hoping this resource will not only help you be comfortable in choosing to keep your sons intact, if that's what you choose, but to also give you an arsenal of information that you can go back to anybody who might actually be struggling with this and or giving you a hard time about it. But the resources there are a whole list of reasons why you shouldn't. Um, there's also the resources for the religious aspect, uh, as well as just, I mean, the information about um, Ms. Dr. Kellogg or Mr. Kellogg. I mean, obviously this, this website has a slew of information. You really do need to go check it out and make sure you are educated because as Holly very aptly said, it is our job to protect our kids. As always, we want to wish you an awesome day.